So, I'm here in front of the church of Creo Saint Sebastien, which is a tiny village in Normandy where I spent the entirety of confinement due to COVID-19. Now, the village's namesake comes from Saint Sebastian, perhaps the most famous of patron saints in times of plague. Above the church portal, you can see in the stained glass window, a representation of Sebastian tied to a pike and shot with arrows in a third century assassination attempt, which failed because Sebastian was cured with the help of God. Later, in the Middle Ages, Sebastian's legend would build. The arrows with which he was shot would transform into plague arrows shot by an angel of God or by God himself. His miraculous powers of curing would be invoked against plagues or any epidemic that cut down large numbers of the population, typhoid, dysentery, black plague, bubonic plague, and why not coronavirus? These are the fields outside of the house in which I spent the entirety of confinement, just minutes from the church that we just saw. The fields perhaps capture the desolation described in plague tracks from antiquity in the Middle Ages better than what we knew today during coronavirus. But my readings and this landscape, this view, gave me time to think and compare the two periods. Mid-afternoon on March 17th, the first day of obligatory confinement in France, my editors at Classique Garnier contacted me to see if I were ready to reread the proof of my first book, a uh, work spanning the entirety of the 16th century and the plague uh, in literature, the title of the book being The Plague in the Renaissance. Uh, it's difficult to compare the way that humanity lived the plagues of the medieval and the early modern periods um, with the way that we have been living COVID-19. Uh, despite often outrageous numbers for a given city or a country, um, one third, one half, the entirety of a population, uh, plagues remained local right, while they were taking place. The inhabitants of a village such as Pré au Saint Sébastien would have known nothing of the 100,000 people who were supposedly dying in Florence, Italy, or even what was going on in Paris during the Great Plague of the Middle Ages. Today, on the other hand, if we tune into the news, we know of medical advancements by the minute how the Prime Minister of Great Britain uh, came down with the virus, or what a long-haired, newly well-known medical doctor from Marseille uh, thinks of the virus, or the rather oddball prophylactic measures that the United States president is uh, advising and perhaps taking himself uh, concerning the virus. True, outlandish cures such as odorous copper apples, or rose pills, or anything bitter or treated with vinegar were always a huge part of plague writings, it can be found in any one of a number of historical documents dealing with the disease. And they always warned readers to find good doctors as well, reliable doctors, doctors who weren't impostors. What I'm saying is, if in early modern times, confinement was much more confined than it is today, uh, plague victims died extremely alone, there are remarkable similarities between the early modern period and ours. In the introduction to the Decameron, Boccaccio provides a basic, however literary, model for human reactions to the plague in Florence in 1348. It provides one for coronavirus in 2019-2020 as well. According to Boccaccio, there were initial fears and psychological fantasies by the masses who thought only of saving themselves. Today, supermarkets were out of stock, surgical masks, alcohol-based gels, hygienic paper were all sold out. The fleeing to the countryside of many was then, as it is now. Others, however, ignored all counsel to avoid one another, went about laughing and singing and satisfying themselves as they sought. Many today, including famous sports figures, politicians, and heads of state, ignored the most basic advice that came up from antiquity, quito longue tarde, which means leave quickly and come back late. People therefore abandoned each other then as now because they chose to or because they had to. How many grandparents didn't see their children over the course of the three month obligatory confinement in France? How many parents didn't see their children? 
Now, the death rate during at least the Black Plague was considerably higher than what we're dealing with with COVID-19. The passion for counting, recording numbers is perhaps the same, as are the mass burials. This, for example, is an image of the mass burial that took place in Brazil just this April, which is extremely reminiscent of the mass burials that we hear of and that we've read about throughout the Middle Ages. The time of year the Black Death saw its height was from March to July, according to Boccaccio. In France, confinement ran from March to June. And the numbers are still raging in early July in the United States and elsewhere, where they didn't go into a proper confinement. Individuals have always complained of the inefficiency of medication and cures in times of plague, and always compared the current plague to past plagues. We today fear the model of the dreaded Spanish flu that struck somewhat quietly in spring, and then harshly in fall, 1918. In this time of coronavirus, printing presses, cinemas, stadiums, art museums, and theaters have been closed, which has concretely delayed publications, exhibitions, and events on the year. But it's also likely changing what culture is. When the theaters closed in England in 1593, Shakespeare wrote some of his finest narrative poems. He also began writing the plays that would build his name and reputation throughout history. Perhaps the plague had nothing to do with this change, Perhaps it was simply his time, but perhaps the plague gave Shakespeare the solitary time to better reflect and to find who William Shakespeare really was. What will our new culture look like after COVID-19? Moreover, plagues were lucrative. Plague treatises sold well, massively to doctors in Latin, to commoners in English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, and so on. And famous individuals, such as Clément Marot, had their names attached to erudite plague treatises. How do plagues end? Well, things will go back to, or at least they'll create a new normal. But plagues also commonly end in a popular revolt, such as the famous Peasants' Revolt of the Middle Ages. Perhaps today's equivalent to this sort of a popular revolt can be seen in a movement such as Black Lives Matter.